everywhere I go for the last fucking two weeks. As you can possibly imagine, I'm sort of by myself and having this strange vehicle following me. So I had absolutely no doubt in my mind that I was actually being followed. The world had stopped and it was just me and him. Are you hearing that beeping noise? Yeah, I am. What is that? What the fuck is that? I don't know. What the fuck? Yeah, I don't know what that is. Okay. I've, I've never heard that before of you. Yeah. God, this shit's creepy, dude. This is fucking scary. God damn it. <laughs> So I couldn't sleep. Because I want to say you something. Begin with the Latuna fire, the largest one to ever burn within LA city limits. It's raging now for a second day. More than 700 homes in LA and Glendale remain under evacuation orders tonight. The Trump administration has made it official. The U.S. is pulling out of a decades-long nuclear treaty with Russia, known as the Intermediate Range Nuclear Forces Treaty. The deal is now dead. The Kremlin says it's winning the race to develop cutting-edge nuclear weapons, despite last week's mysterious explosion at a military testing site which killed at least five nuclear scientists. Local officials had reported a spike in radiation levels in the area, while Russia's defense ministry said radiation levels were normal, adding to the uncertainty surrounding the incident. The U.S. Navy has finally acknowledged that videos appearing to show UFOs flying through the air are real. They don't call them UFOs, they call them unidentified aerial phenomena. The several videos they're talking about were recorded years ago by fighter pilots. Then in 2017, they were made public by the New York Times. They do, in fact, show aerial phenomena the Navy cannot explain, and that, in fact, our understanding of physics cannot explain. I didn't want to go down this road initially because I'm not a volunteer. What I am is an enthusiast. What I am is an enthusiast, and I know you are too. I know you are too. So as we start going down it, you know, I get contacted by this guy, Daniel David Skyfall, who claimed that he worked for an unacknowledged black intelligence agency that controlled the UFO narrative. For an unacknowledged black intelligence agency that controlled the UFO narrative. For an unacknowledged black intelligence agency that controlled the UFO narrative. Controlled the UFO narrative. And after giving me this long piece of history and all of these cases, uh, all of these examples of interactions with different governments throughout different time periods, the point of the story that Skyfall had given me was to set up and demonstrate that mankind had made three very costly mistakes 
and he listed kind of what those three things were. Uh, one was the continued use of nuclear weapons, which he sent me footage of what absolutely appears to be Saudi Arabia striking with a nuclear bomb in Syria. He also spoke about the advancement of AI and that we are flirting with what could be imminent disaster if we actually do create something that can truly think for itself, a sentient being that can determine what the best path moving forward would be at speeds we can't even fathom. Google has declared it has achieved quantum, quantum, quantum supremacy. supremacy. Quantum supremacy. The amazing part of quantum computing is that it can do things that no current computer can do. Google, in its announcement about this, estimates that it took about 200 seconds for its quantum computer to do a calculation that would have taken a normal supercomputer, even the highest end thing we've got today, about 10,000 10, years to accomplish. 10,000 years to accomplish. 10,000, 10,000 years to accomplish. I have exposure to the very, the very most cutting edge um, AI, and I think people should be really concerned about it. I keep so sounding the alarm bell, but you know, until people see like robots going down the street killing people, like they don't know how to react. And they don't know how to react. And they don't know how to react. AI is, AI is, AI is a, a fundamental, fundamental existential risk for human, human civilization. And I don't think people fully appreciate that. AI is a fundamental existential risk for human civilization. And I don't think people fully appreciate that. And I don't think people fully appreciate And I don't think people fully appreciate and the third thing that he talked about is he pretty much said we destroyed our planet. That it started with the oil companies that kept digging, wanting to go deeper and deeper. And that there were companies that pushed so hard that they actually punctured the Earth's crust and destroyed our own weather. And for decades, we have been controlling the weather and that it's been man-made. Another example is the array of technologies, often referred to collectively as geoengineering, that potentially could help reverse the warming effects of global climate change. One that has gained my personal attention is stratospheric aerosol injection, or SAI, a method of seeding the stratosphere with particles that can help reflect the sun's heat in much the same way that volcanic eruptions do. This is real. What? Straight from a horror movie. What? And it's moving so fast. Look! I know. It's, it's the official hell versus heaven. It's the official hell versus heaven. Now the reason Skyfall pointed out these three things that mankind has done is because he claims that there is going to be a real alien invasion in which the extraterrestrial races, plural, they were gonna introduce zero point energy, this technology that allowed free energy for everybody in the world. And they are going to make sure that no matter what, we are denuclearized because Skyfall had claimed that nuclear weapons are actively being used today and the energy and industrial military complex giants do not want this to happen because their wealth and power is rooted in old technology. 
and they do in fact want to have a war with ETs as they falsely believe that they've back engineered enough alien technology that they stand a chance in which the globalists want Earth to be a breakaway planet, that we do not want oversight from extraterrestrials, that we want to manage ourselves, and that keeps the energy elite and the industrial military complex in power where they have absolute control over everything that goes on in the world. Now, Skyfall is saying in order for this to happen, mankind would have to come together against the extraterrestrial uh, species and the extraterrestrial races that introduce this technology and denuclearize us. And that is when the false flag fake alien invasion would occur in which they are banking on the fact that mankind will say, okay, ETs are essentially the enemy, that they are here to wipe us out and destroy us and kill us. We now have to band together as a species with one common leader in order to save our species. With one common leader in order to save our species. With one common leader in order to save our species. How come you attack This is Houston. Say again, seven. How come you attack Hawkeye? We have an unidentified flying object. Oh, it's I, but it appears to be tumbling. It just seems to be tagging along with us. What's fascinating as this entire story is, guys, I don't want you for one second to think, I just believe everything, you know, the Skyfall sent me. <laughs> Every part of me questioned it and questioned his legitimacy. You know, I tried first and foremost to get him to just drop the moniker of Daniel David Skyfall, because dare I say, that's not his Christian name. But he also made it clear to me that he's not coming forward, that it's far too dangerous and to do so would put his family at risk, which was the most important thing in his world, which he had iterated several times. So I said, okay, well, if your family is in danger uh, by you coming out and revealing your identity, then you've got to do something to let me know that you're real. And that, my friends, is when the prediction started. And if you follow me on social media, you will know this to be true because way back on December 29th, I received a message from Skyfall making several predictions. But the one that struck me as the most obvious to test was in the following months, there would be a massive amount of mainstream media stories on the UFO narrative and that UFOs are real and that it would be the military confirming this. He made this prediction. Now what followed was incredible. UFOs have captivated the public interest for decades, but they've always been dismissed, including by me as the province of wackos. But that is changing thanks to some remarkable videotape and firsthand accounts from very sober people who are trained to identify aircraft. And that would include this video, which shows two Navy pilots encountering something bizarre off the east coast of the United States. Watch this. The U.S. Navy is preparing new guidelines for pilots on how to report sightings 
of UFOs. For many years, it was considered a career ender to report these unexplained encounters, so many military personnel had downplayed them, Shep. Well, here's a kind of amazing fact that should be on the front page of every paper. A secret Department of Defense program paid for researchers to run psychological evaluations on people who said they'd encountered UFOs. Apparently, warehouses were rented. It sounds kooky, but this is actually being reported by the New York Times where metal from downed UFOs could be stored. What? When did that happen and why did nobody tell us? I want to know where it's coming from and I want a tour of this warehouse to see these metal alloys. This is kind of amazing. New reports, five pilots coming forward over the weekend saying they've had multiple mid-air encounters with high-flying, fast-moving objects. Geo, the, the Navy is now investigating? They are, Cecilia. Yeah, a lot of these uh, UFOs have been captured on video, some of them over water, and now at least one pilot says he saw them daily. The New York Times speaking with five Navy pilots who've all said they've encountered UFOs during training missions up and down the East Coast. The pilots even noting that the objects were accelerating to hypersonic speed, making sudden stops and instantaneous turns, something beyond the physical limits of a human crew. Is something really out there? Three more U.S. senators received a classified briefing about UFOs at the Pentagon, or in current lingo, unidentified aerial phenomena. Talk to me about the, these senators getting classified briefings on uh, UFOs. Senator Mark Warner, who is the vice chair of the Intelligence Committee, said, look, I think it's important. He told us just this afternoon, I think it's important that the military is taking this more seriously now than they did in the past. And it was weird because like every couple weeks, it was like the government was just dipping their toes in a little bit more and more into the water. Pretty soon an ankle was in the water, pretty soon it was a knee. And again, if you follow me, you know that on December 29th, I made this prediction on behalf of Skyfall. This is the prediction that he gave me. It blew my mind because like I said, all of a sudden there's a story in the New York Times with multiple pilots talking about how you know, between 2014 and 2015, literally they were talking about for a straight year that every time they would go up, these UFOs would be there. I think there was five different pilots that talked to the LA Times, okay? That's not a choice that pilots will make on their own. I mean, the only way that these pilots could be speaking about this is if the Department of Defense set this up and greenlit it and chose the guys that they want to speak about this phenomenon. So I'm watching this unfold going, how in the fuck did Skyfall know that? How did he possibly know that this was coming right now? Pentagon spokespersons have been fuzzy about the legitimacy of the videos, but the I-Team has now obtained part of the paper trail. This is a DD-1910, the final step in a multi-step process issued by the Department of Defense. The request specifies the three videos, Go Fast, Gimbal, and FLIR. The document shows authorization for release was granted on August 24, 2017. The I-Team has also acquired the DOD directive, which spells out how the release procedure works. This form shows the videos were released by the book. You know, in the media barrage of UFO stories was not the only prediction he made. He made a lot of predictions, and they're slowly but surely coming true. He predicted that although Donald Trump would be impeached, that he would win a second term. The United States Senate, they officially voted to deny the Democrats' latest witness stunt, and the final vote to acquit the president is now inevitable. The Senate has acted. Uh, the only thing left now is to acquit. And uh, we have to process all of this and assess for ourselves now, uh, outside of the, you know, the formalities of a, a Senate trial, what this means for the country and what this means going forward in terms of the rule of law, the Constitution, et cetera. He predicted that the energy elite and the industrial military complex, uh, he claimed that they had selected Trump to usher in um, disclosure. As we mentioned, George also asked President Trump about reports of UFO sightings, and the president for the first time spoke about being briefed on this subject. One of the things you have 
as president is the access to all the information. Right. In the last couple of weeks, we're reading more and more reports of Navy pilots seeing lots and lots of UFOs. Do you think you'd know if there were evidence of extraterrestrials? Well, I think my great, our great pilots would know. Uh, and some of them really see things that are a little bit different than in the past. So we're going to see. But we'll watch it. You'll be the first to know. You gave an interview the other day in which you said you've been briefed on unidentified flying objects. Are they, are they real? Well, I don't want to really get into it too much, but I mean, you have people that swear by it, right? And pilots have come in and they said, and these are pilots that are not pilots that are into that particular world. But we have had people saying that they've seen things. You know, I guess anything's possible. We spoke to a government official recently who said the U.S. government had wreckage from a UFO in a, in a facility on an Air Force Base. Are you familiar with I that? I haven't heard that, no. I haven't heard that. But I have an open mind, Tucker. I mean, we may get, with the current uh, radio telescopes, certainly with the next generation telescopes, we might get absolute confirmation uh, that there's other civilizations out there. And, and therefore, this might happen on President Trump's watch. He'll be the one who has to make the announcement. And what a historic announcement that would be. My fellow Americans, people of the world, we are not alone. So I'm glad to hear he's open-minded and thinking about this, because there has been an upsurge in these sites and who knows what the future will bring. So he makes a few more predictions, but one of the most unique ones, which, again, on a previous podcast, if you go back and listen to it, Skyfall claimed that right before the fake alien invasion, which will give way to a real uh, invasion, he said what will usher this whole thing in will be a war in the Middle East that will involve the U.S. And once this war was in full swing, that is when the false flag fake alien invasion would occur as the realization that we have a common goal. The energy elite, the power elite, they are banking on the fact that mankind will say, okay, you know, forget our borders, our constitutions, any of that stuff. We now have to band together as a species with one common leader in order to save our species. And now, like clockwork, look what's going on with Saudi Arabia. Their oil fields were just halved, <laughs> absolutely halved, uh, in which, you know, uh, Trump is saying Iran was responsible. And now we're on the verge of a Middle Eastern war happening, as Skyfall predicted. This morning, with some of the world's largest oil processing facilities in Saudi Arabia still smoldering, President Trump threatening military action in retaliation, tweeting, we are locked and loaded, depending on verification. But a senior administration official tells ABC News that the highly coordinated attack was launched from Iranian soil. If the Iranians directly attack the Saudis, it's a major escalation and the first time we have seen a direct attack by the Iranians on Saudi territory. In a dramatic escalation of tensions in the Middle East, a US airstrike has killed Iran's most important military command. General Qasem Soleimani was the commander of the Quds Force of Iran's elite revolutionary guards. They are responsible for Iranian foreign military operations and answer directly to the country's supreme leader, Ayatollah Ali Khamenei. Good evening, we're coming on the air with breaking news. The Pentagon confirming that Iran has launched a series of ballistic missiles targeting American forces in Iraq. Let's go to NBC's Richard Engel right now. He is in Iraq with the latest. What can you tell us, Richard? Well, Iran has confirmed that it has launched what is a conventional strike firing, it says, uh, more than a dozen ballistic missiles at bases that house American personnel here in Iraq. And even though it was more of a warning than it was a prediction, Skyfall has consistently claimed that the industrial military complex controls who the sitting U.S. president will be and how many terms he will have. And for this reason, Skyfall says that Trump will consistently be pressured to lead mankind back into an era of nuclear proliferation 
because the leaders of the industrial military complex believe that when the real alien invasion comes, victory for mankind will be secured through the way of the nuclear bomb. Now, for what it's worth, I don't think Trump wants us in a war. In fact, I saw an interview one time where he was basically saying, there's some people on the inside that they're pushing me. And that's what they want. They want war. We have tremendous power economically. If I can solve things economically, that's the way I want it. So you, re you can reassure people you're not looking for some kind of conflict in Iran. And well, I'm the one that talks about these wars that are 19 years and people are just there. And don't kid yourself, you do have a military industrial complex. They do like war. And don't kid yourself, you do have a military industrial complex. They do like war. And don't kid yourself, you do have a military industrial complex. They do like war. And Skyfall's final prediction involved the Space Force. And despite the fact that there's yet to be a single military conflict in space involving the United States in any way, Skyfall says that Trump will continue to ramp up his talks about the Space Force and what it will be in which he will speak about it in a growing and militarized fashion. And that is exactly what's happened. With my signature today, you will witness the birth of the Space Force. And that will be now officially the sixth branch of the United States Armed Forces. That is something really incredible. It's a big moment. That's a big moment, and we're all here for it. Space. Going to be a lot of things happening in space. Because space is the world's newest warfighting domain. Amid grave threats to our national security, American superiority in space is absolutely vital. And we're leading. We're not leading by enough, but very shortly we'll be leading by a lot. The Space Force will help us deter aggression and control the ultimate high ground. And control the ultimate high ground. And control the ultimate high ground. So when I look at all of this and say, wow, he predicted all of these things way back in late December of 2018, it brings me back to the question that keeps me up at night, which is a very, very simple question. Who is Skyfall? Who is Skyfall? Who is Skyfall? Who is where just below every reachable dream lies an oubliette for those who abandon caution as they kill the lily as they kill the lily for the poison of LA is hope and the medicine a snake as nothing is what it seems beneath the sign but that's why more leave than come because no matter how far out you reach you can't see fate's hand to shake through the shades of the paranoid did you hear about that story in Europe of that top UFO researcher put out on his, his page that he fucking found all kinds of secret shit and he was trying to get to a place where he could disclose it and they found him dead with uh, unexplained black fluid running out of his mouth? Did you hear about this? Yeah. Yeah. Like, that shit scares me. You know what I mean? Like, I ain't trying to be that motherfucker. Yeah. God damn, if this is real, I better be careful. I, you know, I, I just hope... How far would you go if you had threatened? You know what I mean? If my life was threatened? Yeah. Would I walk away in a few seconds? Absolutely. Yeah. I'm one dude. They're a fucking empire. Stop right there and just say, you know what? I'll worth my life. Fuck it. I, I'm not trying to fucking save the planet, dude. I'm trying to tell a full story. You know what I mean? Oh, oh. another thing was weird, too. Laura and I got in an argument four or five days ago. Right? So we got in the argument in the bedroom. 
right when she woke up, and it was about whether or not she was going to go in that day and stay late, or if she was going to spend her last day before school with me, and that's what we were fighting about, in the bedroom when we woke up. So I come out here, and I was going to access our phone call, and I see a fresh new file right after that. I'm like, what is this? And I click play on it, Justin, and it's Laura and I's whole argument. I'm like, why did my phone record Laura and I arguing? It's a, it's a minute and 43 seconds of our argument. I just said I wanted to spend time with you. And why are you saying all this shit about, I don't give a fuck about you? What are you talking about? No, I'm saying that was the plan. Early Friday. It's been a lot of Friday, but that didn't happen. You woke up at 9 Friday. You went in at noon. Oh, I did not, Chad. Or your meeting was at 1. I did not one. leave here until... Yeah, the meeting was at 2. I was there all of maybe a half hour before. That's why I was so upset Friday. What did I have to do with me wanting to hang out with you? Oh, and what the fuck did I say to me? The and then you start yelling and saying shit like, I don't care about your job and I, and I don't think it's fucking important. Where, where are you coming up with this? Why say all that? Because then you would understand what I say. You could say that. You could. But that's not what concerns you. 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 And the thing is, you to record that, you got to hit the, you know... You gotta open the app and hit record. Yeah. You know, so I don't know, man. I mean, what I was basically Paul to just say is, just keep your eyes on it. Even if something seems small, just like let me know and document it. Just everything's fine, you know, but like just, just keep your eyes open. Just if anything weird happens, let me know. Son of a bitch has been behind me everywhere I go for the last fucking two weeks. For about two weeks, I was certain, certain that I was being followed by this black Mercedes that would always have its lights on, the tinted windows. And it only stopped once I had told my partners, Justin and Thomas, about this, in which we talked through a plan basically to you know, drive these people to the police station, slam it, park, and get out and try to film them, whoever was following me. And then that day it stopped. But then even weirder things started happening. I was watching television here with Laura, and all of a sudden, on my television, it says a guest is trying to uh, basically cast video to your television. Do you agree, yes or no? And I was thinking, well, if someone's trying to stream a video to me, it's probably one of my friends in the building, you know, they're probably playing with me. How they got my password to log into my network, I have no idea, because we have a, a private network that we pay for to be private. So I hit yes, honestly thinking this is gonna be a friend. And it ends up being footage from outside the front gate of my place. Just somebody streaming footage. Which was terrifying. Unfortunately, I was not able to document that because they only streamed it for about a good 20, you know, seconds total. And it took about, you know, three or four seconds to realize what the hell I was even looking at. But I ran out there as fast as I could. Couldn't find anybody. But in order to stream like that, you would have to be pretty dang close in the vicinity of my television to do that. So whoever it was, they were extremely close. Which obviously scared me. They would have to be so close. So close. Thank you.
I'll show you the angle that it was at. So I hit play on the stream. I hit play on the stream on the TV and it was this angle. Just like if you were if you were just standing out in the street. So they had to film it here and then they had to run it up to my door. Hack my network. Find my TV on it. What the fuck? Whoa. Over my shoulder here. Mercedes to windows. See it? I thought that somebody could be right outside your house filming you. It's fucking unnerving. I don't want to do this shit anymore. That's how I honestly feel. I don't want to do this. I don't even know what the goal is. If I had every piece of the puzzle, then what? And I'm, and I'm so goddamn curious that I can't, I just can't, I can't stop myself from wanting to see what's next. But it's like, I didn't, sign up to be a filmmaker so I can do a fucking perimeter sweep in my house to make sure there's no bad guys. And Laura's just fucking freaked. Laura definitely did not sign up for this. wasn't disturbing enough, two other events would occur in the following days that would become year-long trends. The first is that our checking accounts are regularly compromised through our debit cards being copied. In fact, our most recent compromise took place on March 5th, in which our bank informed us that Laura's physical card was used and swiped in Brazil. It goes without saying, that's an impossibility. Right now this happens? Shit makes me sick to my stomach. And the second compromise was of my cell phone, which to this day, no less than 10 times a week, I randomly get asked to input my username and my password to my Mac mail, despite the fact that I've only willingly changed my password three times in the last year. And unfortunately, as we would soon learn, whoever was doing this to us was only getting started. As on countless consecutive nights, between 2 a.m. and 3 a.m., our car alarm would be activated. That's our car alarm going off right now, again. What in the fuck? You go first. This is our car again. Yeah, this has been going on non-stop. That's our car. And as fate would have it, I soon learned that Laura and I were not the only ones dealing with these issues when I received a terrifying phone call from Craig's wife, Nikki. You have reached the voicemail box of... Chad Kalick. Chad, it's Nikki. I need to talk to you. This is my number that hopefully come up on your mobile. Something's happened today and uh, it's not safe for Craig to give you a call. So I called Nikki back and told her that it was absolutely imperative that I speak to Craig. In which after arranging a call from a payphone, Craig told me one of the most mind-blowing stories I've ever heard. Which I had him repeat on my podcast. 
as I made my way to the front door, I could see on the other side that there were two guys standing there. I've opened the door and those two guys that had first visited me were back. This is where, if it was anyone else telling me this story, they'd, they'd probably lose me. But it felt like I was in some type of paralysis. I was stuck into a position where I was just kind of staring at them. Same two guys. The same two guys. Or no face. Okay. The same two guys uh, wearing very similar clothing as they were the first time. I, I, I felt like I was paralyzed and I quickly realized I couldn't even turn my head. They had the same smile on their face and they basically told me that this was the last warning I was going to get. That I was to stop doing what I was doing immediately with you and they know you by name that the next time they come, the warnings are done and they're gonna do something about it. Now, there were threats that were made even more specific than, you know, we're going to do something. The first thing that they told me was that um, uh, if I don't stop doing what I'm doing with you, that files are gonna be placed on my computer that will be found and that these files will end my credibility that these files will send me to jail. But, but don't forget, I'm in a state of paralysis as well. So I'm still thinking, what that, why can't I move? So I'm hearing this, but that's not really registering in my head. Right. The threat that does register, though, is the fact that he mentioned my son's school. Oh. And uh, that I couldn't do a damn thing about it. Yeah. And um, when someone threatens your family and you're unable to do anything, anything, it is the most terrifying experience. And they know where I live. They know where my family lives. They know where my boys go to school. And they know that the the boys are my world. You know, the boys and Nick are my world. So if you're going to get me, that's where, that's where you're going to hit me. After hearing this story, I was terrified for Craig, Nikki, and Rocco and Diesel. Which only two days later, Craig called me back to tell me that on his way home from work, he saw two individuals that were stationed outside of his house. As he now believed, these two men were surveilling his every move. And I was coming home one evening, late, and as I was pulling into my driveway, I could see that there were two guys in black standing in the vacant lot, just watching it, looking at it at my house. Wow. I really wanted to get a photo of them so I could send it to you and go, dude, see, these, right, these, right. this is what I'm talking about. I didn't want to go down the driveway and face these guys head on because I was still pretty scarred from, from that experience being yeah, of course. paralyzed. So I jumped the back fence and I've made my way down the neighbor's property out onto street level and uh, I had my phone with me and when I got to street level and I'm kind of hiding around you know bushes and stuff like that I've looked across the road and there instead of being two there was only one there was only one guy there but this guy wasn't looking he was no longer looking at my house but he had turned his back and he was looking into this vacant lot which was just black just staring off into it. So I've got my phone out. I've tried to zoom in as best as possible without pixelating it too much to take this photo, which I managed to do. The really strange thing is, and this is where it gets so weird again, is that as I've hit that shutter button and it's taken the photo, his head started to glow. It's, it's crazy, you it's know? Crazy. It it's crazy. It's totally crazy. It is totally crazy. But yep. I got to tell you guys, ever since I've started down this road, I can't tell you how many things I went, that's crazy. And then you find out it's real. And then you find out it's real. And then you find out it's real. July 29th, 2019. 
After emailing Daniel David Skyfall to ask him if he knew a date when the fake alien invasion was going to begin, Skyfall responded by sending me a link to download a bunch of documents. Within these documents was an application for a patent by the United States Navy for an anti-gravity UFO. Also included within these documents were the blueprints to the actual craft. When I asked if this spacecraft was real, Skyfall responded by saying, yes, and you've already seen it in action, as he claimed that this vehicle is the Tic Tac UFO, which the Department of Defense released footage of the Tic Tac UFO in action, although they claim to have no knowledge of its origin. Skyfall claims that these documents proves that the government is tricking the public, that they know exactly what the Tic Tac UFO is, and that all the media surrounding the Tic Tac UFO was nothing more than the well-orchestrated early plans of the forthcoming fake alien invasion. This was the first time that I could actually find a good reason as to why somebody would want Craig and I to stop. There are many people out there in the world who are claiming that a fake alien invasion is coming. What separates Craig and I from the rest is the footage of Sir No Face, as well as the hundreds of hours of additional footage that Craig has, in which he's hidden to ensure they are not confiscated. This is all real, and if there is some powerful group of the energy elite that have this plan in play, between Skyfall's information, these documents, and the Sir No Face footage, the messenger is exactly who you would want to kill. As if the sky has ever become blotted out with UFOs, and if alien greys ever begin to walk the streets, the two people that could potentially make a compelling case that it's all fake and inform the public of this are Craig and I. And that's not a comfortable feeling. This is the place where probably the strangest, scariest thing that has ever happened to me occurred. And um, it, was a, uh, it was a Friday evening and I was sick. I had a head cold. And um, I decided I was going to sleep down here on the lounge. I didn't want to sleep with Nick and the boys. I didn't want to spread the germs around. Um, with the, uh, the heater on in the house, it gets really warm, especially um, uh, down, I get really warm anyway, downstairs. So I just had a pair of shorts on, I uh, had my t-shirt on, I uh, didn't have any socks on or anything, and I just jumped onto the lounge with a blanket. And um, eventually I ended up drifting off to sleep. Um, but I didn't wake up here. I woke up somewhere totally different. <coughs> so this uh, vacant lot just across the road from where we live is where I um, where I woke up that night. Um, it was really cold. One of the first things that I remember is that my um, the bottom of my feet were really sore because the grass is really hard and coarse and it's really rough. And I remember feeling my, my feet were really sore and uh, I could see the breath coming from my mouth. It was really, really cold. And I remember feeling the hardness of the road as I, 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 crossed, I crossed the road. And um, I uh, made my way back up the driveway shaking with cold and uh, I remember going to open the front door and it was locked and I'm thinking to myself how the hell did I get out here um, and as I stood back in front of the house I've, I've looked up and I noticed that Rocco's window was open he usually leaves his window open so I started calling for him um, well it's pretty late in the night it's probably around 1, 1.30 um, I didn't have work until late the next day, so I was up. And I was just hopping into bed. And um, as soon as my head hit the pillow, actually, it was like almost instant. I heard, Rock, Rocco, Rocco. I uh, wasn't really sure where, where that was coming from. And I heard it again, and I looked out my window, and there there was Craig there, looking up at my window, shiver, nothing but his shirt and undies on, shivering like this. So I opened the door, and, I'm locked out. 
was, as I was confused, I just ran downstairs, I was confused. I'm dead bolted the door, unlocked, unlocked, opened him, opened the door, stepped outside, but his first reaction, he stepped away from me. I think I said to him, I said, um, is this a dream? Is this a dream? And he said, no, no, it's not. Is this, is this a dream? Is this a dream? I said, no, it's not a dream, but just get inside, it's not a dream. And he was very paranoid himself. Is everything locked, all the doors locked? I felt him grab my arm and, and pull me inside and it wasn't long after that when uh, Nick, Nick came downstairs as well. I was, you know, woken really abruptly by Rocco shaking me, saying, Mum, Mum, you know, something really weird's happened. And, and I was like, what on earth is going on, mate? You know, because I just must have dozed off to sleep. Rocco was totally flustered. He was pacing. He didn't, he's coming to me. He's going back to me. He said, you've got to come, you've got to come. Something really weird has happened. And coming down the stairs and seeing Craig on the couch, <laughs> his eyes were so wide with fear. It was that deer in headlights, headlights look. To hear that he wasn't in the house and that he was down the street. I know, I lock the house. I'm a bit OCD with my, the locking and I, I will do two or three checks, uh, you know, dead locking, locking, locking. Um, so I know for a fact that the house was locked and locked really well. I checked everything was locked. The garage was locked, the back door, front door, like everything, everything was dead bolted locked. There, there's just no logical reason I still don't know how how I, I got out here. And what do you think happened? Going off what happened and what I saw and what he had on him, it's hard to go past that. He just teleported, ET, something along those lines. Because it doesn't make sense otherwise. So this is where I ended up. Somewhere standing in, somewhere standing in this, uh, this vacant light. And it also happens to be the, um, the same vacant lot where we've photographed the strange people um, with the glowing heads and people standing here, you know, looking at the, uh, watching us, watching our house and they're here when I turn up and it's all it's all happening around here in this area, so it's just it's really strange that uh, I should happen to wake up and it's it's here in this in this vacant lot where it's all uh, where it's all been happening. So I had just gotten back from this event in Texas and it was about 11.45 I think it was. It was close to midnight and Bugsy had to go to the bathroom. So I was walking him over here. It's just a narrow pathway and these meters are right here. Well at this first meter I was just walking Bugs to get around the corner because there's a grass opening in front and right as I stop here I notice there's a guy across the way, across the street from me. And he's kitty corner, right where, right where you can see right there. That's Bay Street, okay? So there's a car to the left of me here, immediately at this meter. And there's a car that just comes around the corner, just like this one's done. I see that car come. And right as I see it come, I see a guy pull a gun out. Now there was a car coming directly in front of me. I seen him pull the gun out and he was looking in my direction. So I immediately just hit the ground. So I'm laying right here on the ground and I just hear <laughs> loud as shit. I roll back over and I'm staring at this white wall. And I got a hold of Bugs under my arm. Like he's just under my arm. I hear the car go driving by, I look back down here now remember I'm laying on the ground so it's more like this angle 
I'm looking back and I see the car take off, you know, past the car that I'm next to because there was a car right here. I crawl a little forward and I could see that the guy's running down the hill. He's already running down the hill. Like I could see that he just left and went and ran down the hill. And I could already hear cop cars coming. So somebody must have either seen it or heard it right away. So I get up, turn around, I grab Bugsy, and I just start making my way back this way as fast as I possibly can. Well, the next day comes, and it's in the news. Everything's in the news. And I saw in the newspaper that when the cops came, he just ran out the beach, and he just shot himself. He just killed himself. So he fired directly at me when a car was going by. And then he ran down to the beach and killed himself. Now, in my heart of hearts, I don't think he was shooting at me per se. I think I just happened to be right place, wrong time and I was directly in his line of fire. But here's the thing. The fact that I have to wonder, <laughs> the fact that there's a part of me that wants to know if somebody tried to kill me, is fucking crazy. And even though I don't think that was the case, I still find it all weird. Right outside my place, a guy happens to pull a gun and fire directly in my direction. While this is all going on. Like how many things like this can happen before you gotta really stop, stop and think about what's going on, you know? And I just got to a place where if I'm living a lifestyle where I have to wonder if somebody would try to kill me for what I'm doing, then maybe, maybe it's time to wrap it up and call it a ball game, you know? Anyways. I was barely 13 when the company man tried to dig my daddy's grave. It happened on a French owned tanker ship spilling poison in the Galveston Bay. Well, the liquid fire filled his lungs and his eyes silenced any more cries. Cold in the grave with death stinging pain, he fought like hell. Keep the wolves away As a dog, but he made a recovery just to spite the odds. The settlement came and we moved out of town where the sky is and heavy with refinery glass. Yeah, he's still alive, he's doing good, he's in his 50s, but the money's running out and he's painting for 
pennies So I'm going for broke with every song I play Cause now it's my turn to keep the wolves away Humanity has faced two monumental questions since we first stood on two feet. Why are we here and are we alone in the universe? Well, we may actually be closer to answering the latter. A study out of the UK is fueling theories that there are 36 intelligent alien races in just our galaxy alone. Let's do a science experiment. Go outside tonight, look up, see the Milky Way galaxy. You are now staring at 100 billion stars. How many of those stars have planets? How many of those planets have oceans? How many of those oceans have fish and aquatic life? How many of them have intelligent life? And so this is called Drake's equation. Trying to get a ballpark estimate of how many civilizations there are in the galaxy. And that's where they came up with the number 36. They took a bare bones, stripped down Drake's equation. Stripped down Drake's equation. Stripped before you leave office, will you let us know if there's aliens? Because this is the only thing I really want to know. I, I want to know what's going on. Would you ever open up Roswell and let us know what's really going on there? So many people ask me that question. I yes. know, it sounds almost ridiculous, no, but it's actually the real question I want to know. It sounds like a cute question, but it's actually, there are millions and millions of people that want to go there, that want to see it. I won't talk to you about what I know about it, but Roswell's a very interesting place with a lot of people that would like to know what's going on. It's probably time to stop calling people who believe in UFOs crackpots after the recent revelation that there's actually a Pentagon task force looking into them. One astrophysicist who has worked for the Pentagon's UFO program since 2007 told the New York Times that he gave a classified briefing to a Defense Department agency about retrievals from, quote, off-world vehicles not made on this Earth. Are we on the brink of full disclosure about visitors from outer space? Collectively, as a humanity? Yes. Should this not be the top headline? It, it w I mean, it's trending on Twitter. It's crazy how caught up you can get, though, in the human stuff. Just in the human daily life, that a story like this can break and not every single human is talking about it because it really feels like if this had have happened at a different moment where people weren't so caught up with the typical daily noise, then it just would be so much chatter around this. I'm not saying there isn't chatter, there is chatter, but this is crazy. 